Let our praise be a welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. We are here for you. To your hearts are open, nothing else is hidden. You are one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Let our shout be your anthem. Your renown fill the skies. We are here for you. We are here for you. To you, our hearts are open. Nothing else is hidden. You are our one desire. Only you are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. We welcome you with praise, we welcome you with praise, almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place, let every heart adore, let every soul awake, almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place, we welcome you with praise, we welcome you with praise, Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Let every heart adore, let every soul awake. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place.
Before we begin our worship today, we'll take a moment to still our minds and bodies and graciously ask that we can leave behind all those things that might be distracting us this morning. Those things that stand in the way of us offering praise and worship to our Lord. As we join together in the presence of God, we invite the Holy Spirit to come among us to open our hearts and minds to the words we're going to hear through the liturgy, scripture, songs and prayers this morning. Merciful God, we come before you with praise and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ. You have lavished on us every spiritual blessing we could possibly imagine. Before the world was created, you already knew us and loved us. You adopted us as your children and redeemed us through the blood of Christ. Even more, you have made us your heirs and given us your own spirit as a sign and guarantee. How we praise you. Open our hearts and minds to your presence among us here. May our worship this morning bring you honour and glory. For you alone are worthy of our praise. Amen. Welcome in the name of Christ, God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So good morning everybody and welcome to St Catherine's, all of you here in person and everybody watching on YouTube or Facebook. As you'll have noticed it's me that's leading this morning and Cathy will be preaching a little bit later. And it's my pleasure to welcome back Trevor, who some of you will have seen before, is going to be leading us this morning with our singing, which is a great relief to me. Some of the songs will be familiar and there might be some that are new to us today, but I'm sure we'll pick them up as we go along. We're continuing to wear face coverings in church, even while we're singing, so make sure you take a deep breath and sing up extra loud from behind your masks. And when it comes to communion, could you please stay in your seats and Cathy will come to you. And Pete has asked me to let you know that we have a problem this morning with the heating. So hopefully it'll be fixed for next week, but thankfully today is mild and the sun's coming through the window, so I don't think we'll be too cold. So this morning we'll be reflecting on how we're all made for God's pleasure and how as the children of God we bring him pleasure like nothing else he's created. And one of the ways we bring God pleasure is through our praise and worship. So we're going to begin our worship now So could I please ask you to stand as Trevor leads in the song, Now Come, Now is the Time to Worship. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are.
Please sit down as we come to our time of confession, as we call to mind those things we think, say and do that fail to reflect God's image in us, and we'll have a moment of quiet as we bring those things before God. We stand in the presence of our Maker, knowing we have failed to be the people our God wants us to be. Let us face our faults and try to grow away from them through the love and mercy of God. In our daily lives, we have forgotten God. We have put self-interest before care for others. We have cared too much what others think of us and sought their good opinion when we should have acted for Christ. Teach us to love our neighbour as ourselves through the love and mercy of God. We have set idols in our lives, caring too much for things, for ways of life and for ideas. We have lied, we have lived our lives as if the world belonged to us. We have forgotten who we are. Teach us to remember we are your children through the love and mercy of God. We have set boundaries on your love, choosing who will be included in your great family and who will be set outside it. We have used your name to build barriers, to exclude and to imprison. Teach us our right relationship with all your creation. Through the love and mercy of God, Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us all our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we'll just take a moment as we reflect on God's forgiveness, which is so freely given, and let that feeling of forgiveness take root in our hearts. Now could I ask you please to stand if you're able as we affirm our faith in the words of the song Our Father Everlasting. Our Father Everlasting The All-Creating One God Almighty, through your Holy Spirit, conceive in Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Our 
judge and our defender Suffered and crucified Forgiveness is in you Descended into darkness You rose in glorious light Forever seated high I believe in God our Father I believe in Christ the Son I believe in the Holy Spirit Our God is three in one I believe in the resurrection That we will rise again For I believe in standing for a moment as we bring our prayers to God. Lord of the hosts of heaven, our salvation and our strength, without you we are lost. Guard us from all that harms or hurts and raise us when we fall. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now please sit down as we listen to our reading which is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, beginning to read at chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Christ Jesus in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavishes on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfilment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. This is the word of the Lord. I'll pass you over now to Cathy for the sermon. I'm not going to have to move that, Jill, or else I'm not going <laughs> to... Thank you. Cheers. Let's just pause for a moment. Just let those words sink in. Those words that assure us that we are adopted as God's children... Father God, we do thank you that through your son Jesus Christ we have been adopted into your family as sons and daughters. And Lord, we pray you will open our, our ears and our eyes and our hearts 
just to perhaps let that sink in and to learn more about how our relationship with you can bring you pleasure but also bring us peace and love and joy and healing as we become the people that you call us to be. So we just pray, Lord, that you will help us to hear your voice as we continue. Amen. As I've reflected on the last few weeks of our sermons, as we've sort of been focusing on getting back to the basics of discipleship, maybe putting down, you might want to think of it as putting down foundations as we begin to rebuild as God's church, sort of post-COVID. And I've been aware of several threads that have sort of come through in the last few weeks. One of those threads is knowing that we are wonderfully and fearfully made by God. That truth that none of us is an accident or a mistake. That all of us has a purpose and ultimately our purpose as individuals and as the body of Christ is to bring glory to God as we work with him and for him in bringing in his kingdom of love and peace and joy into the brokenness of the world in which we live. And we'll each do this in our own way, using our own individual gifts and abilities that God has blessed us with. And of course, we'll be looking at that example of Jesus who lived his life as a demonstration of what it is to be the perfect human being, living in that perfect relationship of love with God, trusting him in all situations, obeying him completely, even when the consequences were suffering and death. And we know that God was pleased with Jesus as we reflected on those words a few weeks ago from Jesus' baptism when God the Father said, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Our reading today assures us that we too are God's children, that we're loved and adopted by him with that purpose of bringing glory to him as we too work to establish his kingdom. And as we follow Jesus' examples, we too are called to bring pleasure to God, to be those children with which he is well pleased. And we might look at those verses as pointing to rather a a self-indulgent God who looks at us as something to fulfill his own needs. And that's certainly not true. He's made us as his children and he is that perfect parent who delights in us. And I'm sure that we've all at some point seen those parents delight in their children, as they take pleasure in them reaching their milestones from those very first movements and sounds, from the cooing and the gurgles, to that first time they call mummy or daddy. And the delight doesn't stop at babyhood. No, it continues with parents taking pleasure in each stage of their child's life. The other side of that is that children love to bring pleasure to their parents. And I just have in mind those occasions when small children run out of school with something they have made for their grown-up. And they look for that smile of appreciation as they hand over their precious gift with that expectation that it will be displayed in a prominent place in the home. And I know that it's not as simple as that. There are heartaches because... There are no perfect parents, there are no perfect children, or indeed, there is no perfect life. But God shows us parenting in perfection, just as Jesus shows us how to be God's children. So God delights us us as a loving, caring parent. He takes pleasure when we... He is when he hears us speaking his name in love, when we reach out to him, when we spend time with him. 
He is pleased when we do those things we were created and gifted to do, which make his love known in the world. These are God's purposes for us. And it's not just a one-way street. Because in fulfilling God's purposes, we become more complete ourselves. Our relationship with God deepens. We are enabled to grow to become more like that perfect human being who is Jesus. In other words, it's when we are doing those things that we are born to do that we flourish, that we find peace, healing, contentment and joy. And I dare say that this is true even when life is a struggle. You see, the willingness to use our gifts, our time and our energy to fulfill that purpose of bringing glory to God, which will bring him pleasure and delight, is worship. But worship can be multifaceted and includes all that we do and all that we are. And I'm hoping that's something that we'll see in the next few weeks as we continue to reflect on what worship is. But the truth is, worship is not just what we do in church or what we do when we're together in some other place or what we do when we pray at home. It's not just the songs we sing or the prayers that we say, but it's everything we do. And it's also the attitude in which we do it as we fulfill our purpose to bring glory to God, as we work with him and for him to increase his kingdom and to do those things that bring him pleasure. Perhaps we could call them the things that make God smile, like a loving parent who smiles at a child who has brought them pleasure. Perhaps a parent that's proud of their efforts. And I want to unpack this a little bit further by turning to the story of Noah to help us to learn something about the principles associated with fulfilling God's purpose and bringing him pleasure And that those things that might widen our understanding of worship and the attitude that we need in our hearts to bring those smiles to God's God's face. So we, we know the story of Noah. He lived in a time where everyone was pleasing themselves and no one was pleasing God. And God was tempted to just wipe the whole of creation out. Except there was one man, Noah, who the Bible tells us brought pleasure to God because of his attitudes which affected his actions. You see, Noah loved God supremely. The Bible tells us that even when no one else followed God, Noah maintained a close relationship with God and followed God's ways. Genesis 6 verse 9 tells us that Noah walked faithfully with God. Now, God made us for a relationship with him. He created you because he wanted to love you. And it pleases him when you love him back. God's not looking for fancy sacrifices. He's looking for simple love. And the prophet Isaiah tells, uh, Hosea tells us that God said, I want you to show love and not offer sacrifices. I want you to know me more than I want burnt offerings. You see, God loves us not because of what we've done or not done. He simply loves us. Remember that he he loved the love he poured on Jesus at, at his baptism at the very beginning of his ministry. He poured that love on him before he had done anything. Remember also that God so loved the world. He loved you and me that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting love, life. That's the love that God has for us and it pleases him when we love him back. Just like it pleases you and me when someone loves us back. But in expressing our love to God, we're actually obeying the most important commandment that we've been given, that commandment to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. And we need to remember also that those commandments are not given to us in an attitude of overbearing authoritarian power. 
They're given to us out of love because it's in growing in that loving relationship with God and with others that we are able to fulfill our purposes and find that inner peace, healing and joy that God so desires for us. Indeed, learning to love God and be loved by him should be the greatest objective of our lives. So moving on, the second thing that makes God smile is when we trust him completely. I can't help thinking of a young child jumping into their parents' arms, fully confident that they will be caught. That's a demonstration of childlike trust. And yes, we all too often in our human weaknesses as parents let see parents that let their children down but remember God is that perfect parent and we can trust him completely even when we don't understand the journey that he takes us on I'm always led to Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6 that say trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on on your own understanding In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. So let's look back at Noah, who certainly trusted God even when it just didn't make sense. Now the message translation of Hebrews 11 verse 7 says, By faith, Noah built a ship in the middle of dry land. He was warned about something he couldn't see and acted on something that he was told. The result, his family was saved, his act of faith drew a sharp line between the evil of of unbelieving world and the righteousness of of um, of the believing world. And there were several things that wouldn't have made sense to Noah and that might have caused him to doubt God rather than trust him. First, Noah hadn't encountered rain. Genesis 2 verse 5 tells us that in Noah's day, God had not, seen, had not sent any rain, but the whole earth was watered by underground springs. There's a second fact that Noah didn't live anywhere near the sea. So if he built this huge boat, how was he to get it to water? And then I suppose I would have been asking, how am I supposed to gather all these animals together? It seemed a really big job. And the ark wasn't built in a day or a week. It took Noah 120 years to build the ark. So he really did need to trust God and he needed some determination to carry on where there seemed to be no sign of a grey cloud, never mind a drop of rain. And of course he had to withstand the mocking of those who labelled him a madman who was building a boat in the middle of dry land waiting for something called rain that no one had ever heard of. But Noah trusted God for the bigger picture. That pleased God and it would have made God smile. Just like it pleases any parent when their child trusts them enough to share their deepest concerns, to trust their wisdom and to follow their guidance. And trusting God is part of our worship and it demonstrates our faith, especially when God only gives us part of the picture and we have to trust him from the rest further down the line. But isn't that how trust grows? Trust is about trusting God maybe for little things and then we can trust him for the big things. Hebrews tells us that without faith it is impossible to please God Trusting and having faith gives God pleasure. It fulfills his purposes for us as we flourish, as we are able to play our part in growing his kingdom and reflecting his glory and doing so, we find that peace and joy which the world cannot understand. Even when, like Noah, we might be in a place and a situation that seems totally absurd to the human mind, but which will bring about God's purpose for creation. And when we trust and experience his faithfulness, yeah, it makes it easier for us to trust in the future. 
Thirdly, when we, we please God, when we obey him wholeheartedly. You read, if you read the story of Noah, there are some very specific instructions. And Noah obeys God to the letter. And God is pleased with him. King David had a similar attitude. Psalm 119 says, just tell me what to do and I'll do it, Lord. As long as I live, I'll wholeheartedly obey. And yet it's so tempting to obey God half-heartedly, to pick and choose which parts we will obey and ignore those bits which seem too costly, that might seem unreasonable, that we think are too difficult or dangerous, those things that might make us unpopular. But the truth is that being partially obedient is indeed being disobedient. And it doesn't reflect our worship. That worship that, that, it, what, that calls for us to worship God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind and with all our strength. Rather we have our eyes turned partially on our own will rather than God's will. And we're worshipping the gods of this world, making them idols which draw us away from God. And in doing so, we rob ourselves of that intimate relationship with the God that can give us peace and joy. You see, obeying God fully helps us to understand his purposes better. I can imagine when Noah finished building the ark and the rain began to fall, he could look in the mirror and say, now I understand. And then again, if maybe if there'd been another occasion when God had asked him to do something that seemed absolutely bonkers, he would have willingly done it because obedience had grown understanding. His faith and trust had increased, which in itself brings a sense of human flourishing and peace and joy because we've pleased God. And we need to remind ourselves that obedience is not always about earning God's love. It's not ever about learning God's love. No, we say here time and time again, God loves us because of his wonderful grace. But we do deepen our relationship with God and bring him pleasure through our obedience because it's an offering of our love to him. Remember, Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. And God takes pleasure when we praise and thank him continually. Noah lived with a heart of thanksgiving. The first thing he did when the ark landed on dry land was to build an altar and make a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Now because of all that Jesus has done for us, we no longer need to offer sacrifices in the same way. However, we are called to give a sacrifice of praise. Now, we all love to receive praise and thanksgiving, and God's no exception. He loves to receive our praise and thanksgiving. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18 tells us, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. That verse reminds us that giving God praise and thanksgiving is not just for when things are going well. No, it's about praising and thanking God at all times and in all places. Yes, giving thanks for all God gives us to enjoy. But, you know, we have to balance that with, that, with growing to hold lightly onto the things of the world. Because those things will disappear. And we need to be focusing on those things, on those very truths that came across in our reading the reading that told us that we are children of God, that we have redemption and forgiveness of sins through the blood of Jesus. Those things are the things we can praise God for continually, even in the more challenging times, because they will not change. And in fulfilling our purposes in this way, we are enabled to find comfort and peace in those difficult times of life, as we acknowledge that God's faithfulness gives us a purpose beyond our present situations. And lastly, God is pleased 
when he sees us using the gifts that he has given us. Now we can see that Noah had those do-it-yourself skills and he was able to build an ark. But it didn't stop there. No, when life was ready to continue, God told Noah to be fruitful, to flourish in every part of his life. And perhaps the biggest mistake we make is when we think about worship is that it's what we do in church or in our quiet times. But it is so much more. It's about taking every opportunity to be, to be fruitful and to flourish to use the abilities that God has given us to bring glory to him, whether that's cooking the tea or digging the garden or playing football, whatever we are doing, knowing that we are doing it for him. And boy, having that in the back of your mind really does change our attitudes because everything becomes worship. God does not just delight in the part of our lives where we do those spiritual things, but he delights in all of our lives, 24-7. Or as Psalm 37 puts it, he delights in every detail of our lives. And he's given us all a unique set of abilities. And when we were praying earlier on, Trevor kind of had a picture of us as a congregation And we're saying that there's like all our gifts are like treasures inside. And we're called to open them out so that those treasures, those gifts can be used by him to further the purpose of God and to help us to flourish as children of God and together as the church of God. You see, we should recognize and celebrate those gifts that within us, those treasures that God has implanted in our hearts. And so often we deny them, we try to hide them. Perhaps it's too scary to let them out. And there are times that we kind of wish we had somebody else's gifts, that we could do this like that person or that like this person. But that's denying the gift that God has given to you. We need to be in a confident place to rejoice that God has made me, me, and God has made you, you. He's given you your characteristics, your qualities and abilities, and he delights in you and is pleased when you fulfill his purpose for him. Using those gifts, being fruitful and flourishing, as we bring glory to him. Now each of those areas could do with a sermon on their own and hopefully we will revisit them from time to time. But for now, let's just take on board that when you love God, when you trust him, when you obey him, when you offer him praise and thanksgiving and when we use our God-given abilities, You make God smile. You bring him pleasure. He is pleased with you. And you might be sitting there thinking, this is far too hard. It's hard to please God. And you know, I'm with you because we live in a really difficult world. But remember that God delights in the little things and the everyday things. We're not all called to build an ark, but we are called to be faithful and to fulfill our purpose in the way that God intended for us. He delights in your words of kindness. He delights for your acts that have brought relief to the suffering of others. He delights in that phone call that you made just to make sure somebody's okay. He delights in the shopping that you've got for your next door neighbor or the car that you've sent to show somebody that you cared. Those things will make God smile because they fulfill his purpose in sharing his love. And we remember we are God's children. And like any child, we are works in progress. And our faith, wisdom, discernment and abilities are still growing. And yes, we will make mistakes. And there is that temptation to feel that we failed and that God doesn't love us or he loves us less. But you know, that's just not true. God does not need you to be perfect to love you. 
New parents love and delight in their babies before they've even been born and before they have done anything. And God delights in you as you are. And he delights in you as you grow to love him supremely, to trust him completely, to obey him wholeheartedly, to offer praise and thanksgiving continually, and to use your gifts and abilities to make every action and every moment of every day an act of worship as you live your life to fulfill your purpose of bringing glory to God and to making him smile. And yes, these things will take time to perfect in us. And yes, we will get things wrong. But perhaps the most important thing is that at the attitude of our hearts and perhaps asking ourselves regularly, is pleasing God our greatest desire? Even when we get things wrong, we can come back saying, well, I really wanted to please God, but it just didn't work this time. Because then we can recognize those times when our love, trust and obedience and our use of our abilities are not in line with God's purpose and plan. And we can come to the God who loves us with that attitude of wanting to please him rather than ourselves. And we can receive forgiveness. We can feel his love surround us as we continue to grow in knowing what it is to be made to bring God's pleasure and to make him smile and to know that he delights in you and you and you and you and you, each and every one of us. Amen. Let's just pause for a moment. Lord our God, we just thank you that you delight in each one of us wherever we are on our journey of life and wherever we are on our journey of faith. And Lord, we know that you want us to love you, to trust you, to obey you. You want us to use our gifts and abilities to your glory to grow your kingdom of love and peace, but also to grow ourselves to become more of the people that you have created us to be. So that we might know more of your love, more of your peace and more of your healing and joy. And so, Lord, we just pray that you will increase in our hearts that desire to please you, to worship you with every part of our lives, with a very, very small acts and those things that might seem more significant and bigger. And I was drawn this morning as I was listening to the radio to the fact that today marks the 70th anniversary of the Queen coming to the throne and, and she's been such an example of all of this that she has loved her God, she's trusted God, she's been obedient to him and she's used her gifts and abilities to, to try and spread that message of good, God's love. And so Lord, we do thank you for her this morning and her all that she has done for us, her example that she's given us. And we offer you our praise and thanksgiving for her. And so we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to move into a time of worship now. We're going to sing two songs. The first one, Trevor was singing as we gathered, so you might recognise the tune. Please join in as you're able. And the second song is one that we are all familiar with. Please either remain seated if you want to have that attitude of prayer or stand as you feel that you want to. You have 
have been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Till I found leaves the ninety nine. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Fights till I found leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love. just worship you Lord and um, we love you because you first loved us and we thank you Lord for how much you love us and you delight in us yeah just continue to worship just encourage you to stand up if you want to or just rest in the Lord's presence either one's okay how's the deer pans for the water so my songs
Lord, may we thirst for your presence, just as the deer needs water to survive. May we see our daily need for you and experience your presence in all we do. Amen. Now we come now to our time of intercession. Lord God, we come into your presence with praise and thanksgiving for your faithful love. Your love never fails, not even when we turn away from you. When we ignore your invitation or desert you for gods of our own making, even then you do not abandon us, but reach out again and again, inviting us back into relationship once more. As you welcome us, so you welcome our prayers. We bring them to you with confidence, knowing that you will hear and answer. We pray for the world you created and the people we share it with, for countries caught up in war or violent conflict, for regions of the world struggling with increased cases of COVID-19, for those whose homes and lives are threatened by natural disaster. For these and all areas of the world in need, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and for all its people. For Elizabeth, our Queen, on the 70th anniversary of her accession to the throne. For our government and local councils. For the NHS and all other public servants for our cities, towns and rural communities, for employers and employees, for young and old, for asylum seekers and refugees, for all who are part of this country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local community and the people of Wakefield, for all those who are unemployed, for those in prison, for those who are hungry, for those who are alone and afraid, for all our neighbours, both known and unknown to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation, both here and watching from home, our brothers and sisters in Christ, for those who are ill, or whose loved ones are ill, for those who are anxious about the future, for those struggling with their faith, and for those who minister among us. For all your people in this place, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died recently, and for those who mourn their loss. And in a moment of quiet, we name them before God in the silence of our hearts. Receive them to yourself and grant that they may rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pour out your spirit on us. Fix our hearts and minds on what is true and honourable and right. Give us the joy and peace that comes from knowing and doing your will. Keep us faithful to the call we have received in Christ Jesus our Lord. Extending your loving invitation to the world around us. Merciful Father. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. So let's prepare to draw near to God and to receive these symbols of his love for all of us. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. So as we give thanks and praise, let's now recall the night that Jesus taught his disciples to break bread and share wine in remembrance of him. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he sat at supper with his disciples. While they were eating, he took a piece of bread and he said a blessing. He broke it and gave it to them with the words, this is my body, it is broken for you. Do this to remember me. Later he took the cup of wine, saying, this cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood. Drink from it, all of you, to remember me. And so following Jesus' example and command, we take this bread and wine, the ordinary things of the world which Christ will bless as his gift to us. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Jesus, you don't own 
me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry when I just sang another song Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I'm sorry When I've come with my agenda I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough Take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you I just want you Nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do I just want you Nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do I just want you Nothing else Nothing else, Jesus Nothing else will do I'm caught up in your presence And I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment And I never want to Well, I'm not here for blessing Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you Go before us, Lord, in all we do, with your most gracious favour, and guide us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, receive everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join with me as we say together, Merciful God, you have called us to your table and fed us with the bread of life. Draw us and all people to serve your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Right, we come to our notices for this morning, and the first one is the Mother's Union have made 169 of these emergency packages for the hospital, and donations would still be um, of toiletries would be gratefully received as the hospital are still short. The second one, at 3.30 this afternoon at the cathedral, there's a service of choral evensong to mark the 70th anniversary of accession of Her Majesty the Queen. That starts at 3.30 at the cathedral today. The next one is the Follow Me series at the cathedral, which will be starting again in March, but that will be a quiet day, sorry, at the um, Community of the Resurrection then in April and May they've got speakers and the May speaker will be the Right Honourable Rowan Williams. So that's Cathy. And the last one is the trip to the Holy Land which is being led by Bishop Tony Robinson in November. So we'll put these notices back on the notice board if anybody wants to have a look later. So, before we stand to sing our final hymn, we'll think for a moment about what we've heard today. How we're made for God's pleasure, made to reflect God's glory out into the world, and how we can reflect the praise and glory of God's creation back to him through our worship. And let's think about all the ordinary and mundane tasks that we do throughout the day, which can be offered to God as an act of worship if we did dedicate that task to him. Our sleeping, eating, getting up, and even the washing up, all tasks become part of our daily rhythm of praise for God. And we give thanks for all the opportunities we'll have in the coming week before we join together again next Sunday to bring our praise to him again. So please, if you're able to stand, we join together for our final song of worship, 10,000 Reasons.
May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon us, his children, that we may use his gifts to his glory and the welfare of all peoples. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us today and always. Amen. The Lord God Almighty is our Father. He loves us and tenderly cares for us. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Saviour. He has redeemed us and will defend us to the end. The Lord the Holy Spirit is among us. He will lead us in God's holy way to God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be praise and glory today and forever. Amen. Amen.